So hi everyone, welcome to Step in Mom podcast. Uh, my name is Veronica Daram. I am a step family coach and I work with the co-parents as well. And today I have my dearest friend, John, with me today. We know each other for a few years now. It's unbelievable if I think about it, how long we know each other. <laughs> Yeah, seems like a long time. Yeah, so hi, John. Thank you for being here. And please let us know who you are and what you do, because you will do the best justice to yourself. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, We've kind of feels like we've spoken about this before and it just didn't really happen. So it's really nice to actually get around to doing it. Um, I'm Joanne. I am the founder at Star Education. I... At the moment, my big shift at the moment, I have really shifted my work and I am delivering accredited mental health training and qualifications at the moment with a huge focus on family mental health. Um, And that really is because I became a mum just after you, not long after you. Um, I was last May and it's really, really caused me to focus um, on mental health for reasons I'll go into later. But I previously was a a primary teacher and leader in schools and a trainer and a consultant and did all kinds of wonderful things. I've always got I've always got lots of different things on the go. Mm. So so you know because I know your work uh for some time now, but what you know what inspired you or how did you get into uh teaching and working with uh, children? Yes, yeah, so I think for me, teaching really is a vocation and it's either in your blood or, or it isn't. And for me, it was it's always just been in my blood. And I guess the pivotal big, big thing that happened to me when I was 10 years old, I was, I had quite a chaotic childhood. I, I was raised by my grandmother. And when my grandmother died, when I was 10 years old, she was really my only carer. And I, I, yeah, it was really difficult, really difficult time for me. And I loved school anyway. I just always loved school. But I had this amazing teacher called Mrs. Marshall. And she was just so kind. Like she wrapped me up in cotton wool. Like I was one of her own children and she really took care of me and I really felt the kindness from her I felt the compassion even at that age of 10 and I guess she just became a bit of an idol to me and I always just wanted to be like her and I think probably from that moment I knew I was going to be a teacher and just always just loved being around children but I still I still think about Mrs Marshall like every year you see these tweets going around it's thank a teacher teacher's day and thank a teacher and every every time I see those tweets I think of her because definitely she she inspired my whole career that's amazing because it's really hard you know when we're looking back at school for me like I would probably remember more the teachers I didn't like than (laughs) the teachers I like and and I'm so glad after having such a difficult childhood you find the comfort with someone in in a school in education because it is hard and and you know you you hear more than negative stories than the the positives and especially these days so it's amazing how you know you could transform something you know what was beginning traumatic into something quite uh quite positive mm-hmm. and i know that you you know you you mentioned before that your work shifted and I could see it on your Instagram, on your, you know, social media platforms that you just completely shifted. And you briefly mentioned before the motherhood, but did, how did that impact you? Because it was a massive change for me as well. But what was that like you? Yeah, I think that the first thing for me is, and you'll understand this, and I think most mums do, you can't go back to what you used to do. It's it's not an option. So I used to work so hard. I'd quite often be working with um, individual students to get them through their uh, qualifications. I think before I delivered my baby, I, I had maybe 30 individual students I, and I was teaching at the University of Glasgow. And sometimes I would work at night. I'd often work at weekend. You can't do that anymore. It's just not... 
it, it's just not feasible. So I knew when I came off maternity leave that I couldn't go back to that way of working. I also knew that I didn't want um I didn't want my baby in childcare for the full week. I just it's just not it wasn't an option for me. So the first I guess the first thing for me was like I need to change something. Mm. I need to be able to work effectively uh, in a better way that that will you know suit our family. So I think that was the first reason. And the second yeah, reason made me want to tell drop on the floor. <laughs> oh, I don't need to hear it. <laughs> I, can still, I can still see it. That's good. <laughs> Is he sleeping? Yeah. Yeah, he's sleeping. Oh, <laughs> see, this is the mom life. Exactly. You can't go where you were before, like you said. You can't no. just go back to normal. What so many moms are chasing. You yeah. know, no, you can't back to the normal. I could do <clears throat> podcasts before any time I like. You know, yeah. but now, no, only when he's on enough time. And I'm hoping you're gonna wake him up. <laughs> yeah. so, and then the days that you organize things for the nap times, they don't want to nap oh, anyway. Yeah. So you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, I'll see. Let's see. I'm sorry. So <laughs> let's go back. You were saying that you work weekends, uh, yeah. so many clients, and that's just not option for you and your family to go back yeah. where you were before. Just, just couldn't do it. So that was the first thing I had to really get creative and think about what, what can I do? And then I guess the really, really two other kind of major things, becoming a parent myself, I did a lot of work with parents previously, supporting them with children who had social, emotional, behavioral difficulties. And since becoming a mum myself, I really look back and reflect on a lot of the advice and a lot of the things that I was saying and doing with parents. And I'm like, who do you think you were, Joanne? Who really? You had no clue. You have absolutely no clue. So I was given all these tips and try this and try this and this will work. It doesn't work when it's mum. It doesn't work when it's dad. But I really didn't, I couldn't understand that. So since since becoming a, a, a mum myself, I really feel that I've got this, a new fresh eye on the advice that I can give, the way that I can support because I'm going through it at, as well at the same time. And then I guess the other really big personal thing that's happened for me and made me want to really I've got a master's in in psychology anyway made me want to further go into mental health as the relationship that has naturally just developed with my mother which I have never ever had before um my mother was really severely schizophrenic and that's why I was raised by my grandmother and I've never, I've never had a, been able to, she died when I was 10, just after my grandmother, but I'd never had a relationship with her and never really was able to imagine what a relationship would have been like with her um, because I, I was often scared of her, um, confused and just couldn't understand. And as I got older, always very envious of women who have that relationship with their mum it's something I've just never been able to understand and it, it was so strange almost the minute I got pregnant it's like I could feel my mum with me and I knew you were sick too I had such a difficult pregnancy like yes. yeah. so sick all the time and so miserable and we had um, Owen had COVID and I didn't know how it was all when things were really crazy we didn't know the impact and I was scared that something was going to happen I had some bleeding all these horrible things and I really really felt that my mum was there and I guess that's continued I really feel very close to my mum now um, my daughter's named after her as well and my grandmother had the same name and it's just like She's with me all the time. And for the first time in my life, I understand what it must have been like for her uh, to, to be so ill, <clears throat> to be so mentally ill, which made her physically ill. And to do it all alone, she she gave birth to me all alone. And then she had to pass me to, my, to her mum, to, to my grandmother, because she couldn't look after me and how difficult that must have been for her. And I struggled and I've got an amazing partner and an amazing network and it's just it's just given me so much more understanding 
and I a lot of memories have come back to me that blocked out I don't know if I blocked them out certainly forgot them maybe she's passing them to me there's so much around around the stigma that she must have faced the discrimination that she faced and I experienced it too as her daughter and that's really as well made me want to educate educate other people on the effects of the uh, stigma and mental health and how now in 2022 it's still so prevalent it's still it's still not good enough and I guess that's maybe like a little nod to my mum like I'm going to try and make some kind of change for you there, there's certainly and maybe I feel her driving me to do this it's certainly been very natural and just felt like a path now that I need to follow but it's been it's been a really beautiful process like it, I feel her with me all the time and to, for 38 years to have never had that connection with my mother to, to now have it it's quite special it's just so amazing because you know I know you before you having had your daughter and knowing you now and it's it's amazing how you said like even she's not here you know she's not you know physically yeah. like it's so amazing how our bodies and minds are really somehow mysteriously connected. Absolutely. And just the pregnancy co can cause so much. It's, yeah, it's just kind of sometimes hard to wrap your head around. Like, how how come? You know, how come yeah. now? Yeah. And there is something that you never, never be maybe able to, you know, explain. But it doesn't matter. You don't need to explain it. As long as you feel it, you feel it. And whatever happened it's you know it's fine as long yeah. as it's working for you and it works beautifully for you and I'm so happy that you have now the connection because I can't even imagine how difficult it had to be for you you know losing everyone even you know, when your mom was around she was ill so you know I, 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 I don't and I appreciate that you knowing that you know even you appreciate her and you appreciate even though she couldn't do her best, you know, or, you know, the, on a paper, it's the best. You know, yeah. She did still look after you or when she knew she couldn't, she acknowledged that and I said, okay, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I just want to mention, it's really interesting what you said, like no matter, like it's year 2022 and we still have the stigmas about the mental health. And this mm -hmm. is something that I find really hard right now for myself to process because even though I contact some people at the NHS about my mental health and it's like, it's like it took a few people to ask me actually how I am doing yeah. you know and it's just like I know you're a receptionist but I just said I need to see a doctor about my mental health and you didn't even ask you know mm -hmm. and it's just like what's wrong with people you know and and that's that's a massive part of the the qualifications that I'm delivering it's how to speak to people, how to have these supportive, gentle conversations that make people feel safe, that make them feel that they, they can open up because, you know, you're phoning the doctor about something really scary. You're on the edge of the phone, a bag of nerves, really worried about it, and you don't get anything on the end of the phone. So if everyone can just be a little bit more understanding and compassionate, and I guess that's another huge driver for me, just about educating how to have these conversations with people because I, I i think because i uh know about your new program you're doing and i love the part when you talk about leaders and being leaders as mm. a parent mm -hmm. and it's exactly what you're saying like it's not just being a leader to my son but a leader to when i make calls for his appointments or talking to doctors mm. and like you said even talking about myself no, I want to ever go and see my GP tomorrow and I'm scared to talk about mental health so that he doesn't take the kid away from me, you know, oh. or things like that. I was like, how are you going to talk about it? And yeah. so tell me more about the program you created because it's amazing that you're teaching parents to, you know, what do you teach to Thank parents you. in that program? <laughs> yeah, so I've created this and again, it just, that's how I know it's right and I'm so excited about it. It just really happened, really naturally. Everything seemed to fall into place. So it's a, a six-week parenting program 
it's aimed for parents, but really anyone working with children um, will benefit from it. And it's got it's I've called it a six week learning journey in family, mental health and wellbeing, because I really want you to feel like you're going on a bit of a journey. And then your final destination is you get an accredited qualification in mental health. So again, this has all just come from my professional experience. My my work, my experience of being a child who they suffered trauma and now being a mum, it's like everything has just clicked together for me. So we're covering loads of exciting things. Week one is all about attachment and how important attachment is in relationships with your child and everybody else. And it's a big one for me because I often get asked the background you and the things you, you, you've been through. How did you not end up on drugs? How have you managed to go to university? How have you managed to be successful? And the reason that I, I have managed to do okay and be resilient is because I had a very secure attachment figure and, and my grandmother until I was 10. That, that foundation, that attachment, that strong attachment is what allowed me to succeed. So I'm really, really passionate about, about that area. I also did for my master's, I focused on that. So um, that's in week one. In week two, this is another big one for me. Week, you'll understand this. I know we, you've talked about it before. Week two is all about neuroscience and self-regulating in order to regulate your child when your child is dysregulated or having some kind of meltdown, having, I don't particularly like that term, but you know, having some issue and they're really out of sync. And I did a lot of this as my work as a nurture teacher, working with children with difficulties. And it didn't really used to phase me. I could calm children down really easily. I could bring them to me. I give them a cuddle, soften the situation, and it, it didn't really get to me inside. I, I, I had quite a, a quite a, um, a shield up. I, I could deal with it, but when it's your own child, oh wow! I was not prepared for it. I was not prepared for physically what would happen to my body when when my baby screams. When, when my baby moans, I was not prepared for it. So it's very hard for me to, it was, I've done a lot of work on it. It was very hard for me to get her into a really calm state when my body, my nervous system was through the roof. I just couldn't do it. And I, so it kind of made me, th got me thinking a lot. Listen, I've got years of experience. I've got a master's degree in child psychology. I've got all these qualifications to work with children with these difficulties, and I'm struggling with my own child. How are other people? How, how, how do other people function? How do they do it? So, yeah, for the past year, I've really been working on this, getting better at keeping myself regulated so that I can then regulate my baby. And I really want to teach other parents about what's going on in your body. When you are feeling that, I think you you did you did some really nice stuff on mum rage. When, when you're feeling that mum rage, when you're feeling that out of control, do you want to talk a wee bit about that? Yeah, I, I, I it's it's horrible. It's one of the feelings when you're just like, you know, the worst part because we're talking about the children. Like the mum rage is one thing. It, it's a horrible, horrible. But then when you're experiencing and when Theo was baby, he didn't see it, you know, he didn't process anything. Mm -hmm. But now when I get angry and, and he sees me, I can see how like, he looks like confused or scared mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, even now I have chills because it's breaking my heart. Mm -hmm. And like what I learned, I just, I, I just start crying mm -hmm. because I know when I cry, he knows what's going on and he comes and we have a cuddle and mm -hmm. it helps me to calm down, you know. Mm -hmm. so instead of being angry I just start crying mm -hmm. and yeah it helps yeah, see, that's, that's really good because you're mm -hmm. getting it out yeah you're just, getting it out yeah so this this is like this like okay this works for me and him as well but you know as you said like you are experiencing so much and then mm -hmm. then like how to process because obviously you know the children will pick up on our energy on mm -hmm. our expressions and everything so mm -hmm. for me it's just the like, you need to regulate yourself or you need to do something so your own child is not scared of you, which is yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or the, 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 if you don't, their, their 
um, their dysregulation is just going to last longer because you're just going to get higher and they're just going to get higher and it, it, it just lasts longer and then there'll be a massive explosion. Yeah. So I, that's another, again, really personal reason why I feel this needs to be taught. And I was talking about it on my stories yesterday. Another reason that it's so important is I'm doing it every single day. You know, I, I'm not, I don't have a child 18 years old and I'm past all that. I'm I'm in it with you. And I think that really adds adds to the to the effectiveness of it. Because I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I, I want to be with the parents. I'm not lecturing. I want to be with them on the journey the same at the same time. Yeah, it, it is important because we need the support. We need someone who will, you know, tell us they kind of like what to do or or in a way that like, yeah, just tell me what to do because mm. it takes time to figure it out, doesn't it? Yeah. Yourself. Yeah. I yeah. will be in, to you in November, you know, mm. and I just kind of figured it out that crying is better than me, mm. you know. So the, it took me too long you know yeah. but I I, you know. still won't get it perfectly so no, no. the other night the other night we had I don't know what's going on at the minute she's um, not enjoying baths for someone she was a wee girl that absolutely loved the bath and the shower she loved everything she's just screaming the place down and the other night it was from the second she got put in the bath the whole time everything was a battle and screaming and I couldn't regulate myself. Like I was, I was just, I just couldn't. So I had to shout Owen and say, can you take over please? And the only way was me removing myself, locking the bedroom door, taking some deep breaths and coming back to myself. So no matter the education you might have, still that understanding that sometimes it's not going to work and you're only human. No, absolutely. Because, you know, there's the, which uh, it was a bit completely out of, uh, uh, the topic but not really we watched a movie with my husband and they were um torturing a prisoner in america and they put a son of crying baby in his cell for whole night you know or day and i was like that is torture yeah i have a chills because i will lose it like 10 minutes in you know <laughs> and it's like it is torture because the you know the crying baby especially for women or moms it's so triggering like you you don't think straight you 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 know what to do you know, you know but it's just your brain it kind of shuts down or whatever and the emotion takes over and you know i find it so hard sometimes they just like really like you said removing from the situation you know as long as he's is he's safe i need to walk yeah. away yeah, you know, close my ears and and just cover my ears and just like do whatever I need to do to yeah. go back to normal, you know, mm -hmm. normal or feeling okay. So I'm okay being with him again. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just about, just about understanding that you're you're not a bad mum when that happens. <laughs> it, it's perfectly normal, and I think you had mentioned it in your sort of mum guilt post as well. Why is why are people not talking about this? Why why is there not a, a why didn't we get education on this when we were pregnant? <laughs> why why wasn't there stuff like this to warn us about this? Yeah, they just tell us about, you know, postnatal depressions and, you know, baby blues. And I was like, okay, I'm not experiencing that, but I'm experiencing this. What is this? And I have to go and figure it out myself. And, and you know, now likely I, I see a shift in talking about mom rage and talking about the, you know, not as yes, There is a slight, but yeah, yeah, it's taking some time. Yeah. For people I would to like to see the health visitors when they come to visit. I know they don't come often, but I would like to see some more talk about the real stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when your baby screams, what's going on and why it's making you feel that way. And it's okay. All mums feel it. I would like to see a wee bit more of that. Yeah, it is important. It is, I, I had a health visitor ages ago here and she was more interested about smoke alarms and wherever gas gas alarm thing mm. more than me or mm. you know so it's like well where are the priorities but that again you can't blame them it's the system no you can't and that's, it's, it's, that's yeah. the system and the system needs to be changed you yeah know? and i um, think that's where you you really need to find your support networks don't you wherever they are i mean you, you've been a, you've been a great help to me with the sleep it, it's just 
grabbing your little support networks whenever you can find them because you really can't depend on you can't depend on the the health visitors and the NHS. Unfortunately not, but there is like you said that it's you. You I know you provide um uh some uh, free uh, ebooks about yeah. uh, about about what? Sorry, my yeah. brain is off now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've just released a little two two little freebies and a, a, a training bundle. And the first one is just an ebook of really nice, easy to implement activities that you can do with your child to promote good mental health and also really to promote nice attachment to each other, things that you can do together. Um an example, give you just one from it um that your your watchers, your viewers might like go out one day with a camera, with the phone and get your child to take um, a photograph of all the kinds of things that make them happy. And then you keep that in a little folder and you can look at that together. If they're feeling sad about something or someone's not their friend for the day or they wouldn't let me play the game, you can look at the, look at these, these wee memories that make them happy. Just nice, easy tips like that. And then the other one is a training video and it's given a tip on what to do when situations are just starting to get child shouting, mum's starting to get, oh, or dad. And it's it's a tip, and you hear me singing in it, which is hilarious. But it's a tip just to bring the situation and try and try and calm, we put a neuroscience in it to try and calm the situation down. So that's that's on my website or my Instagram for free as well. Right. Just in case, I will put the links uh, in the description so you will be able to find everything and and download and whatever you need to do with this information. <laughs> and um, just briefly, because be before we wrap up, uh, tell me more about the program. Uh, you said it's a six weeks program. Uh, it's a different topics, and there's something. Yeah. I'd finished at week two. Week three is that I think you were quite interested in the parents as leaders. Yes. And yeah. I've I've noticed something. How much time have we got? Ten, ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. Yeah. Something I've noticed as well from being at home for a year and being a stay at home mum for a year and chatting to other stay at home mums, they sometimes lose their feeling of power and authority and they're not working. So they're maybe not managing people. They're not running their business and they lose that sense of, yeah, I'm important. I'm, I'm that, that real feeling. And, it, and it's just about trying to shift that mindset and make them realize actually being a parent is the be the most important and the most difficult leadership position you could ever have. So what I'm trying to do is just empower that, make them feel how important that role is. Um, I'm teaching a little bit of leadership theory in it, which again links to then if, if they are running a business or move into any kind of position and work that they have an idea of the kind of leader that they aspire to be. And then after that, I'm going to do some of the advocacy skills because I see how professionals, you've talked about it, yourself already I see how professionals sometimes speak to parents there's a lot of jargon there can be a real superior attitude sometimes and it's just I just want to give parents the, the skills on how to deal with those tricky situations where they actually feel wait a minute I, I am the leader I am in control and I have the right and I have the authority to to speak how I want to to get what I need done and in a very polite and diplomatic and respectful way but it's just I guess it's just about elevating parents and making them feel that they're a leader yeah it, it is about the confidence you know it's about the confidence to being in the room pick up the phone and just having the conversations you need to have because mm -hmm. if you don't ask you don't get right <laughs> the last part of the qualification is the youth mental health qualification and that's a fairly new one and so it, it's all about skilling parents or anyone working with children and young people skilling them on what to look what sort of what are the signs and symptoms of mental health what sort of things might we be looking for any sort of changes in behavior what might they indicate and again I've already mentioned that how to have those supportive conversations without freaking freaking the child or young person out but also um getting from them the information that you need to know in case, wait a minute, something serious here. And then 
guiding them on the right path, what to do if we do need to contact professionals, where to go. So again, like I'd said, it's it's not just a it's not just a qualification for parents. Really, anyone working with children and and adults, it gives you the skills to have the supportive conversations with adults too. So that's that's that all of that is rolled into six weeks. Brilliant, busy six weeks. <laughs> But uh, last question, a little bit for the quick one. Um, you said before that you know you you when you experience all these things as a mom is completely different uh, than when you were just just a professional. Mm -hmm. But I know as as me, you are stepmom, mm -hmm. and what do you think about that? Like, how did you experience you know being stepmom and and now being mom? I know it's completely different, but you know, like the tantrums, like before I was in the tantrums, like, I don't care, it's not my child, you know, or I don't, you know, it was kind of, it's not embarrassing, she's not mine, she's, you know, but what about now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you say that, because I haven't really compared, and I, I, we're quite lucky, um, Owen's daughter immediately really, really took a shine to me, and we have a really nice relationship and we have, haven't really been in a situation where I've had to apply any of any of that kind of stuff. You know, she's just here for, she's just here, at, that's because we only see her for one day and I haven't been in that situation. And even the term stepmom, I mean, she asked me very early on, will you be my stepmom, Joanne? And that was before, I know, I, I even had put a label on things. She was very keen to have that, that security. So I guess, I guess, I don't know if I even see her like a stepchild. She's, it, it's a really beautiful friendship, a, a friendship almost, it's not, but it's, I don't, I don't see it like a daughter. Certainly not yet anyway. And probably just because we don't, we don't see her that much. Yeah, that's the one thing. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's, it's really nice. I haven't, and she, I think she's, she's quite respectful and things that, I haven't had she hasn't she hasn't had any tantrums in front of me or anything so <laughs> lucky you <laughs> <laughs> well, but I appreciate you saying that like you know and I made that mistake at the beginning being stepmom is that mm -hmm. you really want to like who I am in this relationship what I mm -hmm. can do what I what I should be doing and it's really better to just like just naturally to let it develop and find each other's and yeah you know, meet somewhere where you want to meet. Mm. So I don't see my stepdaughter as my daughter, but mm. I don't necessarily see her as my stepdaughter. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and I, I can't I, quite put I can't quite put a sort of definition on it. It's yeah. it's just I, I, nice. I, when I struggle, I said my I told myself I want to be like a cool auntie for her. Yeah. You know, the one who's gonna be, you know, showing her all the cool movies and uh, you know talking about boys and you know be be the cool one the cool yeah. auntie so that's what I kind of aiming for I mean, yeah I think that's probably what's 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 happened here too yeah. brilliant Jen thank you so much for being here we could talk for hours and hours <laughs> no it's gone really quickly and yeah I'm sure we will do another episode soon yeah. to be honest I I was so sure that we did episode in the past together i, I don't know i had it in my head that we did it <laughs> so, so, so that's how good i know you or like you know the relation just like i'm sure i had to have a podcast with her how come i haven't had <laughs> so i will definitely bring you back soon and yes, i wish to. you all the best with your you know new program and all the new journey you are on and i will see you and talk to you soon okay thank you so much